all right guys we got two downspouts in the front here by the way parking is very good it's really nice this is a 30 foot run and this one is a 40 foot run this is just the front yard now this is a gas lantern this is not electric this has an element in it and even though the elements broken I know there's gas from that to the house so keep that in mind I mean when you're running that maybe do this to get away from that okay all right so let me show you over here what we got all right so the lawn company took all our flags out and they threw them on the ground right there I tracked this already, okay? I tracked it. I hooked up right here. Guess what, guys? The Greenlee works great. So this is how it goes. So I just figured you do your clean out and take it out that way 40 feet, okay? All right, so we got a couple in the back and we have a sump pump line in the back so here's the sump pump line right here see there's no freeze protection or nothing this is very bad and here's the backup and it just dumps right there see so this one this one we can use the rubber cap and put it in a four inch and then we're going to put this in the same trench so we got this downspout and the sump in the same trench then there's a second downspout on the back of the house we're going to grab that and uh, just go straight for the corner don't even look at my flags okay they're, they're obviously they're obviously off straight line to the corner at first we were only here to do four downspouts but now the man is uh, having us do the sump pump discharge line so right here is where we dump all the water gutters gutter water and sump pump discharge line and for the uh, gutters, you can use one of the distribution boxes with a solid green cover. You know, where that one and this one meet, just use, you know, tie them both in and then one blue pipe and one four inch PVC to the corner. So four downspouts and a sump pump discharge line just so you guys can come with what you need so that you guys can grab the parts you need so that you guys come prepared you're gonna need three solid blue pipes 125 feet of four inch schedule 40 guys Beautiful work, beautiful work. Beautiful job. All right, so instead of taking this to daylight, the sump pump we're gonna take to a crock down here. So basically this is one of the FDM's giant 24 inch 
with a 12 inch riser. Look at this sucker. And you see the options it gives you? Look at all the areas for a four inch, all the different heights. It's endless. It, so we, these 24 inch basins, now look, we over dug the hole and we filled it with our stone. This is a, a great time for me to be able to show you guys this. So we have soil that's low percolating, but it will perk. So we have downspouts running over here. We got the solid FDM high octane yard drain pipe manufactured by the Boffman Tile Company. See it? It's solid. This is for the two downspouts in the back of the house here. Then we want to collect the water that's in the yard, making it all spongy. So we have our perforated pipe and you always want your perforated pipe at the bottom. So that way when the water goes inside the trench and it doesn't matter if it's surface water or if it's subsurface water, it all ends up at the bottom of the trench. It's that simple. So you want your perforated pipe for your French drain at the bottom of the trench. We're not letting the sump pump discharge line go anywhere in the yard because once you do that, it's a nightmare to gather up the water. So wherever you're taking this water, think about that. People always run their downspouts 10 feet away from their house. Then they let the water go. Now the water, what do you do? How, how, how do you corral that? It becomes next to impossible. Once you catch roof runoff water at the gutter downspout, don't let it go near the house. Run it. it I always tell you guys, 20 feet is a minimum. I mean, literally all the tests show that through capillary action, water can get pulled back towards the house foundation up to 20 feet. So me and my guys were shooting for 25 feet or more. Now, if you're on a small posted stamp lot in, you know, an urban or suburban community, I get it. Just get it as far away as you possibly can. So we bumped this up. This sump pump discharge line was only an inch and a half schedule 40. Only an inch and a half. It wasn't even the code minimum, which is three inches. The boys here, they went ahead did a beautiful install of a four inch sump pump discharge line. And we even have the homeowner's backup sump tied in with the regular primary sump. So beautiful work. This crew never disappoints. We got our downspouts tied in here, solid. That is the FDM's High octane yard drain pipe manufactured by the Boffman Tile Company, the solid, strongest single wall pipe in the world. So once we get down here, the yard gets pretty spongy. So we went ahead and you can see we wrapped this because we're gonna burrito wrap all the rest of this in stone. And we have the FDM high octane yard drainage pipe that's perforated at the bottom. So this last 50 feet is going to be a French drain. I mean the work is just outstanding. I, I can't I can't say enough about this veteran crew that you know I follow and video for you guys. You know it's hard to obviously cover every job. We most certainly don't I don't know, lately I've been maybe getting a, a video in every five or six jobs, but you know I'm trying to do as much as I can, as much as one man can. So this is gonna be fantastic for this low percolating soil to be surrounded with stone. And meanwhile, the water can sit in this giant 24 inch basin. Yeah, can you believe this? A 24 inch basin, look at that with all those options, all these different locations that you can tie in a pipe, all those knockouts, you can see the circular knockouts. 
the guys went ahead and drilled a bunch of holes, a bunch of weep holes, and just a really nice clean job. And since we had to use a 12 inch riser here, you know, they went ahead and cored through the riser versus using the knockouts on the 24 inch basin. Now these are hard to get, so, you know, we keep them in inventory for us, which means they're always available to you guys. You know that. We shipped out a whole bunch of them this summer. But just beautiful work. Can't say enough about this crew. You know, there was some rain as of lately. Finally, we're starting to see some rain. So this one's pretty spongy, pretty wet back here. And as the temperatures continue to drop, as you can see, uh, the guys got their hoodies on and their car hards on. And I mean, we're starting to really get some some good fall weather and it means more frequent rain and it's not going to have the hot temperatures to dry it up anymore so the people that procrastinated on this service they really missed out that's that's all i'm going to say is they you know we're booking 2021 right now so you know that's just how it goes there's only so much calendar and the ones that procrastinated during the drought and forgot about those water problems that went dormant. Water problems don't go away. I actually had a handful of people tell me when I called them this year, because we were in an eight, eight month drought. Can you believe it? Eight month drought, unbelievable. And we still, you know, booked out. Insane, you know. Uh, this, crew, this, this crew in particular, is in high demand. People want them for this beautiful work that they do. Look at this. But I've actually had people tell me when I call them, they're like, the problem just went away. No, no, the problem didn't go nowhere. What the problem did is it went dormant. That's what the problem did. It just went dormant. As soon as it starts raining again, you'll have the same wet mess so unfortunately, a lot of people are misled and think that yard drain problem can just mysteriously just disappear and uh, no longer be a problem. But uh, the customers that have been living at homes for 20 and 30 years and finally said enough, those were the ones that said, I'm not going through another winter, another fall, winter and spring with this muddy mess. I'm getting you guys out here. I should have done it sooner. And we're gonna make this yard a lot nicer for the family. You got children, they wanna play soccer back here, and, and they can't. And uh, we're gonna change that. We're, so we're being very responsible with the roof runoff water. We're running it 125 feet away from the house because of, you know, the kids are gonna use this as a nice, beautiful soccer field. I mean, this is great for children. I mean, this is this is uh, why people, you know, buy suburban homes with yards like this, so the kids have a place safely to play. And we now have all the roof water from the back of this house, 125 feet away from the house, and that inch and a half. Schedule 40 sump line that I showed you, the old one that they removed. There it is. The homeowner, the previous homeowner, took it to this little basin, which it should have gone in that direction because the yard sloped in that direction. So this was always just year round just horrible 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 you could see the vibrant green grass the blue grass is all killed off you can see the changing color right here so the blue grass is there this vibrant green it's kind of a nappy hard to describe but it's not desired it's less desired it grows in low oxygen with when the bluegrass gets killed off because there's no oxygen, because it's so wet, that stuff seems to thrive.
All right, we're doing a full roof runoff system for this home. Now notice how far away we are running these downspouts. Now the problem was this goes uphill. Okay, so the street drains this way. So the, this will help homeowners, this will help young contractors. Always look at out front and see how the street is pitched. See which direction. You can measure this curb, and then you can measure this curb, and I did and I have, and we got 12 inches of drop. So we wanna take these on an angle towards this side of the lot. That way we get more slope. You're not trying to run water uphill, which we all know how that works out. So the guys are doing a very good job. They're doing a beautiful job. We got Kale putting in a D box. He just got it underneath the sidewalk. We got our clean out over here so we can run a camera down through it. This, this acts as three different things for me. So the homeowner can pop this off, stick their leaf blower in, take the lid off the D box and just blow it clear of any leaves. They just come shooting out of the D box. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Or I can pop that off and I could go ahead and run my camera through here. If there's something, say a bloated chipmunk, because it has happened and as crazy as it sounds, say a chipmunk gets in here and a bloated chipmunk, he dies, drowns, and he's blocking this. I'm gonna find that when I run my camera through here. And another thing, in the winter when these freeze up, and they all do and they all will, when radiant energy, when radiant energy melts snow on rooftops, it could be 20 degrees out, it could be 18 degrees out. I've seen melt off of roofs when it's 10 degrees out. So this is all being hit by direct sun, known as radiant energy. The air, is below freezing. So the gutters start to build up and ice up. Anything that turns to liquid and hits this at an 18 degree temperature, 10 degree temperature, 25 degree temperature, doesn't matter, freezes. So if you end up with an ice blockage down here, when it thaws, it can escape because it's gonna thaw underground it's gonna take longer for it to thaw underground because it's insulated. Everything else is gonna thaw out much quicker, much sooner. And what's buried is insulated and it takes longer, actually days, sometimes weeks. So at least the water can escape. Because what happens when you get ice buildup in your gutters? That ice grows. It tends to grow sunny day after sunny day radiant energy melting the rooftop and then you have this ice just growing in the gutter and then it, it actually goes up under the shingles this is when it does tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage to your home to a structure so you do everything you possibly can to prevent that so i love using these cleanouts for all those many reasons Love having a D-Box midline. It'll collect everything heavy, like shingle gravel. It's a great place to access midway. And we really love these 20 inch rounds because they're very deep and they give you a lot of different knockouts. If your pipe ends up deep, you're fine. You still have enough basin. This is a 16 inches high so real nice basin really love it the guys are doing a really nice job and this homeowner is doing all of this so that he's managing his roof runoff water and his sump pump water responsibly so that it doesn't cost them big bucks down the line and it's going to improve his family's quality of life as they enjoy this property for however long they live here, 
the outdoors is going to be that much more enjoyable with a dry backyard. So we got our D boxes, which that is short for distribution box. You can actually have a downspout come in here, downspout come in here. Your D box is known as a distribution box. You can have a pipe come in three sides and then the main go out. I mean, all kinds of different situations and scenarios. A lot of freedom with these. We love them. Man, we, uh, as you can see, we just use them by the thousands.